with Coach Kim Furlow, Northern Guilford basketball over the years, Southeast Guilford basketball back in the day, UNCG basketball, uh, Appalachian basketball, I think, too, all those basketball. Where did you start playing basketball back when you were just a kid? Where did you grow up playing your first basketball? When did you get started? Honestly, I did not start playing until the eighth grade. Yeah, and I was at Southeast Middle School. So you're back in the junior high school, middle school days. Yep. Who was coaching you back then? Kathy Ferguson. Okay, and learned yeah. a lot in the very beginning? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I knew nothing. <laughs> did you feel like you were behind when you first started? You had to catch up a lot? Or did you feel like you were starting to level ground right everybody else? Um, I started feeling behind when I got to high school. And I was like, oh, gosh, I got a lot to learn. So, yeah. When you got to high school, were you working with Jim Klontz? I was. How much did you learn from Coach Klontz? A lot from him as well. I I've been very fortunate to have some good coaches throughout my career that really taught me a lot. Um, but yeah, he, he he helped a lot. I went from JV to scoring over a thousand to getting a full ride wow. you know, in just four years. So yeah. What was, what was the strength of your game back then? Were you a ball handler, inside player? What was the strength inside, of your game? Inside. Inside yeah. post player, yeah. A lot of rebounds? Yeah. A lot of putbacks probably too, huh? Yeah, yeah. Now you got the recognition of what, Appalachian or how did you, how'd that work? Um, I actually went to University of South Florida first. First, okay. Yeah, went there two years and just decided to transfer closer to home and came to Appalachian. And that ended up being a, a great move for me. Um, that's when you had to sit out a year. So you rich out, rich shirted a year and then uh, played two years, ended up making all conference both years. So that was, that was a good move. All Southern Conference. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. And then if there was still an available year now, the way it is these days, you'd probably come back and play a year for UNCG. <laughs> yeah. Back in the day. I don't know. Now, how'd you end up at UNCG as a coach? Because you coached there some, didn't you? I did. I coached there five years under Lynn A.G. That's a long time. Yeah. Were you just out of college then? I was just out of playing professionally. Over so in, where did you play professionally? Ireland. In Ireland. How many yeah. years there? Just a year. Yep. Uh, it's funny because I actually came back and there was an article in the newspaper and Coach A.G. called and said, hey, we got a camp. Will you come speak? So I did. And while I was there, she said, oh, by the way, we have a coaching position. Are you interested? I said, I am. So it just kind of all happened, just fell into place. It's all happened pretty fast, huh? It did, yeah. You look around and you feel like, I'm kind of young to be getting this Hall of Fame. This is kind of crazy. All this stuff's happened in your career in uh, so fast, so many years. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, yeah, it's been a few years, though, Andy. <laughs> yeah. When you look at Coach AJ and UNCG, I thought it was kind of funny. You've got something actually in, in common with Caitlin Clark, if you knew that or not. Now, you coached UNCG. Uh, yeah. And Fran McCaffrey coached UNCG. Right, right. And his yeah. son is her boyfriend. I think it's That's Ryan right. yeah, McCaffrey. Yeah. So, uh, That's true. <laughs> They're all, all connected some way or another, right? I guess, yeah. Now, how'd you up at Southeast Guilford coaching there? Or you went to Southeast later on after that, didn't you? Did you coach at Southeast I did. Guilford some? Um, I did. I, I went into teaching and um, just ended up there. Assistant coach there under Coach Newton, and then he went overseas. So I took over for a year, and then Northern opened. So the timing just worked out perfect. Northern Guilford, you were never barren for talent. I remember the Kofer sisters back in the beginning. Yeah. Remember Molly and all those girls had a yeah. pretty good four core to get started back in that day at Northern yeah. Guilford. So yeah. you went from those girls, then you jumped to Elisa Canaan, Cassie Ruby Cabbage, Mercedes Wamper, then later on you've got the Newsom sisters, and yeah. you've got the, uh, the Lisas, and you got uh, Jasmine Harris. So all those years, yeah. Northern Guilford has some good talent. Yeah, we have. We, I was very fortunate. Uh, a lot of good talent, but a lot of good, a lot of good girls. You know, just good people and parents and stuff to support, which is important. Um, but yeah, very, very happy with all of our, our teams and the girls that came through there. And you won from the very beginning. You were winners from the very get go. Yeah, yeah. Somehow. <laughs> What was the most fun part about coaching that team? I know you won two championships, had a lot of fun there, but what was the most uh, uh, probably pleasurable part, most satisfying part, most fun part about coaching all those girls all those years? Um, are you talking about the state championship years? No, nah, just about overall. What, what was the most satisfying thing? Because those are great, but there's other things that seem like come too from being around all those kids and growing yeah. up with those kids. Plus, you had another kid there too, I remember, can't forget her, uh, Sammy Furlow. Yeah, can't forget her. Uh, she's here tonight as well. Um, just, you know, getting to know them and seeing them progress and grow up from the little ninth graders to what they all became when they graduated. And, and I still talk to so many of them. And it, it, it's just nice as a coach to watch them grow up into what they are now, you know, awesome adults. The funny thing is, one of my thoughts about this whole conversation, this whole interview, was going to ask just, what's it going to be like in, say, 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road when all these girls get together again and you see them in the future? What do you think that's going to be like? Um, I, I think it'll be awesome. I hope it happens. 
Cats? I think it will. I mean, gosh, you just kind of want to try to badge. You want uh, Elisa Kinane and Cassie Ruby Cabbage, Wampler and Sammy and all those girls alike. And uh, Jasmine, maybe 15, 20 years down the road. That's kind of crazy thinking about that. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure with the Northern New Hall of Fame, you know, those state championship teams for sure will be in there at one point. So they, they hopefully will get together then. You look at all those uh, championships. I remember being down in Fayetteville at Fayetteville State University. I remember looking up at the clock. The clock said 316. I said, this has got to be John 316. They're going to win this game. I remember being in the parking lot before the game with Dan Kinane and Sharon Kinane getting out of the van. They were coming inside. People were coming together. It was like a like a family with that team back then. Oh, yeah. We had a great following. Great following. The Lomaxes, and they brought so many people with them. And, oh, yeah. They, they didn't miss a game. Yeah, that, was, that was such a fun time. Fun run through all those years and, and all the following that we had. It was, it was great. Crazy thought. I take Elisa Kanane out of the equation. If she's out of the equation, <laughs> it's probably a different look. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Elisa just brought so much to the team on and off the court and her parents. I mean, they, they're just phenomenal people. And you think about the Kanaans, they were even still at some Northern Gilford games when she graduated. They still came to the games. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I still, still talk to them now. The funny thing is, the first time I saw you, you were on the right-hand side of the Pleasant Guard Methodist Church on a Sunday morning. You and John and Sammy and Matt, and Matt was always Mr. Venable's favorite acolyte. And you got, and John was in charge of this, I think, the church uh, financial part. He was the financier yeah. of the church, so that's where you kind of got a good sound foundation at that uh, church at Pleasant Garden, too. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I coached a year down there, too. I, I don't know. Did you coach at the Pleasant Garden uh, yeah. school next door? Yeah. And center uh, in Mr. Venable's league? Yes. Oh, that's, you probably coached boys too, right? No, it was girls. It was girls. So, yeah. But I tell you what, I bet you could coach boys. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think you probably yeah. could. You, I wouldn't mind it. Do you see that coming as a regular thing sometime down the road? Uh, it's going to take a while. Right now. <laughs> it's going to take a little while. Yeah, we're, we're actually moved to the beach now, so yeah. enjoying beach life. So you've actually moved out of town. Yeah. Wow, that's a whole new uh, beginning for you yeah, there. Yeah, we're in Wilmington and yeah, really enjoying it. So what is Matt, your son, doing these days? Uh, Matt is in Raleigh and him and his fiance uh, just working and building their life together. And he works for the first team of Raleigh. And he's doing great. What about Sammy? What does she do these days? Sammy and her boyfriend Worth, uh, they live in Charlotte yep. and she works at Ferguson's. So she's, they're both, they're both doing really great. Real proud of both of them. So just you and John down in Wilmington these yes. days, I guess. Yep. Wow, that's a whole new direction for you, probably. Do you it like is. the do you like the slower pace life? I do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Something different for you there. Yeah. What does it mean? I mean, how do you talk about this? You know, we talk about Northern Guilford and Pleasant Garden Methodist Church and Southeast Guilford and UNCG and all those things. What does it mean to get this Guilford County uh, Sports Hall of Fame? I mean, it is such an honor. You know, just just to be nominated and, and voted into this. I mean, I, I just. And you say got a pretty good support group here tonight, some people from all the Gilford and family members, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got some uh, family and friends and assistant coaches. And, yeah, uh, Brian Thomas, my AD. Yeah. So Brian's here? Yes. Good to have him in the house. Yes. Coach Frollo, always good to see you. Every time I see you, I think about success. Thank you. about a big smile on your face, the happiness you have in the family. Your family was strong, and your mother, I think, was strong in bringing you up, too, because she always supported you in everything you did, and your family were very supportive of you, and I think that's why you had the success you had. Yeah, she's here, too. Yeah. You keep it coming, Coach. Good job. Congratulations. Thank you.